Hi, and welcome to this research software hour. So we have a rather interesting topic today. So our purpose is, this is sort of a ad hoc, spontaneous thing. We decided before that we would talk about things that we're basically doing, like things, so meetings or discussions you would have ourselves normally, we'll broadcast and see if it's useful to other people, because why not? So that's what we've got here. So as part of Code Refinery and other projects, we needed to share some knowledge about open broadcaster software, which incidentally is what we use to produce this research software hour. So instead of having a private demo, this is a public demo. So there's probably not many people watching, but you can if you want and we'll have a recording for people to watch later. So with that, let's begin. Um, so first I'll point out the importance of light in streaming. So you see my face is in the shadow. I'm going to plug in this other light, which I had had to remove and Oh, it works. Things are, well, there's still a bit, like, the camera exposure is not very great, but it's hopefully better than before. But that's sort of just a side point, because something I noticed and didn't have time to fix before. So, what's the real point? Like, what are we here to talk about? So, it's streaming, but not just streaming, but using a better tool to produce, um to produce video. So... Um, can I ask a question before we start? Yeah. So, uh, and it's a bit of a rhetorical question, but mm -hmm. what would be the, the difference of just recording like a Zoom call? Mm. So what do we get, uh, what do we get as yeah. a bonus? Yeah. So one bonus is that you have more control over the screen layouts and all the different audios. So it's basically a whole video mixer. So when you record Zoom, there's one of a few layouts. So there's the shared screen, and then there's you, or there's just you, there's gallery. And I think that with Zoom, you can't even control how this works. Like once you start recording, that's just the way it records. It doesn't change the layout later. But with OBS, it's the full video mixer. So as I'll show you soon, you can basically drag and drop the different scenes. So you can put your, your shared screen somewhere, you can put you somewhere, you can put title text or logo somewhere. And that's one advantage. And the second advantage is that once you have this, then you can, instead of being able to share the content just as a meeting, so as the Zoom meeting, it's basically everyone is equal. So the biggest problem with the Zoom trolling and having public Zoom links is someone might join and do something bad in the meeting and affect everyone. Well, that's a problem because in the meeting, everyone is assumed to be able to talk to everyone. But whenever you're doing live streaming, the whole platform is designed so that there's one person or a small group of people broadcasting to a large audience. So that way you no longer have to say, please register to get the Zoom link because we're afraid that someone might do something bad. You can just make it public to everyone and then invite the people you need to do the talking. So of course this has some implications about taking questions from the audience and things like that, but as we've found in Code Refinery, there's other ways to get around that. So what is the difference with the webinar mode of Zoom? So if you have the webinar mode, then you basically don't need the, um, you don't need this as much because webinar is designed for this one to many thing. But at least at our university, there's only limited licenses for this. So not everyone has it by default. So I think they give it to mainly the massive courses and why well, haven't tried asking for such a thing for one of our courses, but, um, so that's a, a free way to get a, a similar feature no? right. because it's, it's free what you will show us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because it's quite expensive, I think, this mm -hmm. webinar. Yeah, good, yeah. thanks. 
yeah, so, um, So it can be a nice tool for people who want to like record their screencasts and share mm -hmm. it on. Yeah, exactly. So there's several times that I've had to give a recording and I wanted the recording to be more professional than uh, it would usually be. So for that, I would, mm, I used OBS. So I made a scene layout where it had a big picture of me, a big picture of my layout, there could be some slight overlap in their logo, and it worked pretty well. So, should we get started and start showing the interface? Maybe you can say what means OBS. Ah, uh, yeah. So, OBS means Open Broadcaster Software. And it's an open source tool, which is good if you want to be open and not rely on... Uh, license things. Should and we put the link somewhere or do we yeah. have the link already? Yeah. Yeah. So and it's the HackMD and the HackMD mm -hmm. is linked via Twitch. And it's also a place where uh, viewers can give comments, ask questions. Yes. Okay. So now we'll do something interesting. I will use the same. So this show is being recorded and broadcasted via OBS, and I'm going to use that same OBS as a demo here. So uh, for Anne and Radovan, I just shared via Zulip the link to the Jitsi that shares the screen for you. And OK, here we go. Now you see OBS. Um, Maybe I can show uh, actually there we go. So hmm. yeah, actually. So Anne and Radovan, have you opened the Jitsi to see it? Yes, it looks like you have. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so now I'll go to the local view, and this is OBS we see right here. So since it's broadcasting itself, you see it sort of goes on down there forever. Um, but that is, I guess, just what we'll have to deal with. So, wait. There we go, now you actually see the whole thing better. So what do we see? On the, at the top we see the preview. So this is what's being broadcasted. So what you see is inside of here. And then we see different sources down here. So for example, I can switch to the title card and now the stream goes to the title card itself and you don't see OBS anymore. If instead I go and I click on gallery, then it goes to the gallery view. And so on and so on. Within each scene, there's different sources. So for example, this source is the gallery view itself. Actually, we need to leave that on. Here's the desktop overlay. It, so, it looks a bit odd what we see on the Twitch normally. Yeah. Because we see. You see it and you see itself. Yeah, I um, see many, many views. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is sort of one of the problems I've had with getting used to OBS because there's so many ways to make either loops of audio or video. Um, but. Do you see the red box or now blue box here? Yes, we see them. That is the preview of the stream. So if you only look at things that are outside of that box, you see my main user interface. I, mean, I wonder if this strategy is even working. Is there a way I can give a better preview? Hmm. I think it's, what, let's see. Yeah. It'll take some time to get used to it, I guess, but 
well, it is what we've got, so we just have to accept it. Okay, so for example here, this is the zoom gallery capture. So I can independently turn this on or off to make the overlay. I can click on the zoom gallery capture and oops, there I go. And I can move it around or drag it off of the screen and so on. So it's an entire graphical method to adjust what you see here. So here's the desktop overlay. If I turn this off, then OBS is no longer broadcasting my desktop, so you don't see anything. And you see, well, the screen goes blank, but you still see the gallery there. And I turn it on or off. So you prepare these scenes before streaming and recording? Yes. And then you, you do you keep these also like for the next session? Yeah, so there's profiles and scene collections here. So here you see in my scene collection, I have 1080p presentations is when I want a full screen to do presentations, uh, demo recording, meeting screen sharing, research software hour with Jitsi, research software hour with Zoom, and all that. So it took me a little while to arrange these layouts and Basically, once I made the one for Research Software Hour, I copied it over and over for all of the other um, things I needed. But it's the kind of thing that can be exported and re-imported, so you don't need to make them from scratch, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe we'll get there, but apart from the Maybe we'll get there. Like the question was that, so we need to select the scenes, but then do we also need to customize some other things? Or can we can, like what other yeah. things do we need to customize to be able to record and stream? Right. So maybe we can go into the settings and take a look. Do you think that's a good idea? Unless you plan to go there later. So I don't know uh, sure about anything. But... I think now's a good time. Let's go there. So here we see OBS settings. So a pretty typical settings dialog. Under general, we see a lot of stuff. Uh, well, these are all basically user interface kind of things. Do you remember the things that you changed? So I, I can tell you the ones I know I changed. These, I think, don't really matter. It's basically UI stuff. So under stream, you see the streaming service. So we see it's set to Twitch, server, Helsinki server, and stream key is hidden because it shouldn't be shown. So output is where it starts getting interesting. Actually, no, let's start with audio. So here in audio, I've set the different audio devices. So I say, when I capture desktop audio, it's coming from my headphones. And you can have another desktop audio card. And then there are three different microphones in here that I could be capturing from. But right now I'm only using the webcam microphone here. So basically I would set these audio devices. So where do they appear? Okay, I will move this away. Let's come back to here. So here we see the different audio devices. So we see the desktop audio and audio from camera, headphones, and my microphone. So for example, I will mute myself. So I just said, and now you couldn't hear me because I was muted and you couldn't hear anything. Actually, in the people in this Zoom meeting probably could, but in Twitch, you could not. And if I mute this, then if Radovan or Adam say anything, I will hear because Zoom is taking it to my, my, my headphones, 
but OBS is not rebroadcasting this to the rest of the world and not recording it. Maybe I should clarify, we should clarify to the readers how this meeting is being put on right now. So it is, we have a Zoom meeting and then I'm using OBS to capture the Zoom meeting screens and it's being rebroadcasted to the rest of the world via Twitch. So that's why my audio is coming from my local microphone and the audio of Radovan Ann is coming from the desktop audio here. Okay, so it's different because because Zoom sends it to the desktop audio, so that's where the Zoom, Zoom audio ends up. Mm -hmm. So your own audio, so your Richard's audio doesn't go through, you don't take the Zoom one, you, you, you take a different channel. Exactly, like now you okay. can see here it's for camera. Mm -hmm. And at one point I drew this big flow chart of how all the audio was being routed and these kinds of things just to keep it straight in my head. Um, it can be a bit confusing, but it can be figured out, I guess. So, so why do we need to have these two, uh, the, you and the others? Is it to adjust the volume? So, mm, so since OBS is capturing on my own computer and through the local microphones, clearly it's only my voice that's being captured in there, right? Mm, because yeah. you're not talking there. And Zoom is not sending my own voice back through yeah, my okay, headphones yes. to listen. Yeah. So. so this is necessary, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I got it. I'm a yeah. bit slow to. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, you wouldn't be surprised at how long it took me to sort of wrap my heads around this and to avoid things like opening up OBS and then suddenly I'm getting feedback in my ears because yeah. there's some loop there. But it's one of yeah, these Yeah, this is what happens to, to me very often. So <laughs> this is why I'm asking more questions because it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit confusing. Yeah. But my recommendation would be to just take it and play with it some and eventually you'll figure it out how it works and like play is better than lectures for this. One really nice thing that I found is it meant that while we're doing online teaching, so if I'm rebroadcasting Zoom, someone else's teaching, then I can mute my own camera. And then um, the people that are teaching can just keep on going. Also, an interesting thing is if we go to the title card or something like this, then I can mute both of us and then we can talk without it being broadcasted in the stream. So it's basically when we were doing the HPC winter kickstart, this was really useful because I'd say, okay, now you go to the breakout rooms and then I mute these two things. And then the other presenters and I can talk without the students hearing us. So basically we didn't have this, we needed an out of band communication channel problem. That's a very good, uh, good suggestion to do actually. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the settings. So we were at audio and there's some other things here like meters or advanced. I didn't really adjust any of these. Oh, there's monitoring device. So you can tell OBS to send your own microphone capture back to your own headphones if you want to see what is being, um, like what you are what you are saying, which might be useful in some sort of professional audio production things where you need to t test your audio quality and make sure it's reasonable. Um, so you um, hear what you are just saying, it must be a bit confusing. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a delay between? So there's a little bit of a delay, enough where it's a bit disconcerting. Yeah. Like I've, I get this idea that like professional performers or bands or things like that, audio feedback is an important thing. Like they need to take the audio from the other people on stage and send it back to themselves either through an ear monitor or 
speakers pointed directly at themselves in order to stay in sync somehow. But I don't think that's too important right here. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to the settings. Okay, we were in audio. What else? Uh, so there's like push to mute, push to talk. If you wanted to have a button to push to unmute, just for certain things. I haven't used any of these. So let's go to video. So these are grayed out because it's actively being recorded, but we see we can set the base, the canvas resolution, and the output resolution, and so on. So basically, this is the size of the screen, the stream that is being broadcasted to Twitch, or that's being recorded. So here we're using 1280 by 720 pixels as the base. Um, yeah, so this is also where I would configure it for the vertical screen layout when I wanted to record in that form. Okay, let's go to hotkeys. So this is something I haven't really used that much. I've tried to use it, but it's been always sort of not practical. The point is there's hotkeys for anything you may want, as you might expect. Let's see what's under advanced. File name format, stream delay, if you wanted to make a delay. I haven't really used these. So the only things that you adjusted were connecting to the right audio devices mm -hmm. and or the streaming key. Yeah. If you have a stream and then in the video you change the resolution. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So there's output here, which is maybe the most complicated of them. So here we've got different audio tracks. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let me show you a different thing about audio. If I click on this gear, advanced audio properties. So we see there are these different, okay. So we see the different audio sources. There's desktop and there's the different microphones. We can adjust the volume of them independently, which is the same as the volume slider here. Uh, balance, offset. This is the monitor that, tell, that lets me give feedback. Um, like that lets you hear what's being broadcasted through your own headphones. And then there's tracks here. So what the tracks means. So I think this is designed for the cases where say you're broadcasting to Twitch or something and you'll have some music in the background, but because of copyright, you can't have this music in the video. So you can say the desktop audio will be in tracks one, but not two. Your microphone will be in both. So you can stream track one that has everything and you record the videos without the music. So you can distribute them separately. And this could be useful for cases like you want to keep the learner audio out of a recorded video or a broadcasted video. But I don't know if there's actually a way to do that usefully with OBS. Maybe it's more of a zoom level, but it's an idea of something that you could do. So why did I bring this up now? Because we just saw it in settings. But if you keep the default for this, it should be all right, no? Yeah, like I think the defaults are pretty good. So you don't really need to do anything with it. You just, um, you just take it and start using it. And then if things don't work, then you look at the settings and adjust it. Okay, so output. So here we see for stream, you can adjust the audio track. Um, you can adjust, oh, interesting. This is a Twitch setting. And then there's encoders, rescaling, all these kinds of things. So 
Maybe a choice you have to make is what kind of bitrate you'll use for the recording and streaming. So this is basically how much data you have per second. And there's a lot that can be said about this, but I can say that I don't think it really makes a big difference. I mean, maybe it does if you really get deep into things, but if you just use the defaults, it will be at least as good as any other default program you can use to record things. And maybe you can make things better later. Um, Twitch recommends constant bitrate for recording. And I won't go into details about why that's the case, but you can read it in the Code Refinery Companion Manual, which someone can put into the HackMD. Um, or maybe I can, let me find it. Uh, there. Um, and you can just sort of search streaming bitrate recommendations and find something, but I wrote down recommendations in this other source, so I think I won't really go into details here, but I guess if you want to go into optimizing your video quality versus bandwidth, there's all kinds of stuff you can do, but. So in the output, you had to change uh, the output mode to advanced. Um, I mean, like, I'm, I'm checking mm. what I have in my default. So yeah. one has to change it to okay. get this menu. Yeah. I mean, maybe it would be wise to leave it with the basics and assume it's good enough because I don't think it really matters. That much. But this rate control, I don't think we have it by default to this uh, CBR. Okay. Well, if anything, that's good for you to not have to deal with that. Okay. Recording. Um, well, recording path, recording format, audio tracks, encoder, basically all of the same questions, again, about the recording you want to do. And then audio, you can set the audio encoding parameters and replay buffer I don't have enabled. And I think that's basically it for the settings. So, yeah. Any questions there? Or we'll go talk about how the output actually comes out and where it goes to. Okay, then let's go on. So here we see the controls on the right side. Uh, we see there's a streaming control and a recording control. You push the button to start it and you push it again to stop. And well, works pretty well. I mean, there's not much else to say. Um, settings. So virtual camera is an interesting concept. So with virtual camera, what it means is that instead of recording or streaming, it makes a virtual camera device, which to other programs looks the same as a webcam or something you'd have connected. And then the other program can capture this as a webcam. So for example, in my Zoom, I could start OBS, put OBS in the virtual camera mode, and then apply different effects to my output to, um, yeah, apply different effects to my output, which looks like it's being applied, it's coming into Zoom via a webcam. So I know some people do fancy things with this. I don't really regularly use it, but it has all kinds of possibilities for teaching. Like for example, you could also tell Zoom to share the webcam as a shared screen or something like that. And then you could have OBS to mix your course. And then in a Zoom meeting, you share the OBS output and then it um, goes in. Okay. Can it be also used to skip some Zoom meetings and appear very active uh, <laughs> by feeding in like a video loop. Actually, yeah, it could exactly do that. So 
Hmm. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> okay, there's other outputs here. So if I right click here, we see there's, okay, previews open. There's these projectors. So if I do a full screen projector, it basically means that it will go and occupy one of my screens with what OBS is presenting. So let's say that I was in the control center of a major event or something like that. Then I could have an HDMI output that goes to the projector that's projecting to the audience and then do full screen projector on this, which will then send the output via HDMI to whatever thing you have. And then I have all these controls so I can use transitions and stuff like that. I'll give an example here. I'll do full screen on this monitor, which is the one that I'm mainly using now. And the zoom window should become something different. Okay, so here we see everything goes away because, well, I guess it's some sort of loop back then. Well, it works. If you let me do this, we're making loops here. Okay, yeah, so it basically started looping back to itself until the whole thing took over the whole screen. <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? It is pretty fun. Yeah. A nice effect. <laughs> yeah. So just another way to make loops. There's also windowed projector, which, um, okay, here we see. So now you see it's another window that is broadcasting what you see. Like this is the OBS output right here. And this is what I've shared via Jitsi to you so you can see my screen live and not have to deal with the Twitch latency. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, well, you can screenshot. Okay. And that's the basics behind these things. So what time is it? So well, there's a question. Yeah. Uh, I can be, and the question is, can we discuss file formats, mm. uh, how to save audio video files in general and yeah. in, in the OBS context. Yeah. So OBS is open source and can use, well, for the video recording, okay, for video encoding, it uses some software called X264. And for audio, I don't know exactly what, and it outputs into pretty standard container formats. Let's look at output. Okay, that doesn't work. I'm going to start another copy of OBS, which I think I can do. But did you update the default, the default for the format? So, okay. So now what you see here is a different OBS instance. Um, but it's also set to research software hour mode. So output, so recording. So there's different formats. Originally I used MP4, but you see this warning. If it's saved in MP4, if your computer crashes, then the file can't be recovered, which I didn't like. So I wanted, but I also wanted a format that I could directly upload to YouTube. So there was MOV, which I switched to, except then I realized that it had the same problem and I sort of never did anything else. This Matroska format is a good recording format, but at least some sites say that it can't be uploaded to YouTube directly. And I think this is sort of the ideal standard open source container format that can do anything. One thing that took some time to learn is that there's a difference between the container format, which is sort of the file format on disk, and the encoding format that is inside of the container. So 
for example, you can encode to um, MPEG4, which is, or maybe it's MPEG2 or something, which is a format for the video, or you can encode in, maybe it's called DivX or something. You can use, but both of these can go into different formats. So whenever I've switched these recording formats, the actual content of the video, the video encoding is the same, it's in it, but it's in a different file format on disk. And then to make it even more confusing, there's different encoders that can encode to the same encoding, which can go into the different container formats. Um, in the manual page I wrote, I gave some recommendations, but I guess I would recommend MP4. Encoder X264 is basically the open source standard. And then, well, whatever the other default options are. Actually, let's see what happens if we go to simple. So there's streaming and there's recording and there's And can you please repeat that? What, what is the recommendation? Because I would like to really write it down here. Mm. So the recommendation was MP4 with... Um, let me see what I wrote under the research software hour. Or not research software hour, but code refinery manual. Mm. Let's see. Conf Oops. What happened? Okay, so here I recommended recording format MP4, encoder X264, rate control. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for rate control, that basically tells you, so there's two options, constant bit rate or variable bit rate. Maybe if there's time, I'll go into detail. So basically when you're live streaming, the recommendation is to always use constant bit rate. Well, why is this? So if it's constant bit rate, then there's a constant rate of data being transmitted. But if it was variable bit rate, there might be a case where there's a relatively static scene and then the bit rate goes down like it should. And then suddenly there's a scene with a lot of motion and the bit rate goes up. But the internet is not very good at taking a stream that has a low bit rate and then suddenly getting bandwidth for everything. I think it's all tied up into things like con congestion controls and TCP and routing and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, but for teaching, uh, what, uh, what we are teaching, is it important? I mean, so I really think it's not so important, at least not at the level like, so I'm not the one that can give very good recommendations here. So maybe we should say we'll do some research and we can see what other people say and then update this manual page with what we recommend here. Um, yeah, this is what I found works. So for streaming, 2,500 kilobits per second um, and constant bit rate. And for all the other options, I didn't really see an effect. For recording, MP4, X264. So CRF means some sort of constant quality thing. So it will use as many bits are needed to get a good quality, which is what you would sort of expect for many recorded videos. Like make it as small as possible, but don't make it, um, but use enough space to record things. And yeah, like I've played with these options, but every time I try to adjust something, I really can't see a difference. So I have a feeling that with the default settings, the um, recording rates or the amount of data 
it has is so much that it just really doesn't matter. I mean, we're not a movie studio distributing digital video to movie theaters where the quality has to be perfect or something. Like, really, maybe we should be more efficient in the space so that our recordings are more accessible to a wider audience. And at the top of this page, I go into more detail, so basic AV concepts here. Um, here there's a glossary of many things, and I talk about, so constant bit rate, variable bit rate, uh, hmm. Okay, I didn't go into more here. Ah, uh, here I say CRF and how that's a variable bit rate encoding. And so yeah, so basically, unless we really want to optimize for size and quality, I think that spending time discussing the defaults. I've tried, but haven't been able to. So your um, advice is uh, not not to change the default, except if you're a professional. <laughs> yeah, like my advice is just don't worry about it. Like, like play around with it if you want and see what you find. But if you just want to record things, don't worry too much. And let's let someone else give us better advice if it becomes important. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think about this kind of tool? Oh, maybe I can show the different scene options. So here we go. There's the title card. I can add different types of sources. Uh, is this scrolling off the screen. So I can add, for example, a color, an image, media, which I guess could play a video in a scene. You can insert scenes into other scenes. You can capture screen. You can insert text. You can capture only video. So basically, almost any kind of input you might want, you can do here. Yeah, let me find another thing. How about this teaching streaming scene collection? OK, yeah, here's some examples. So we've got two logos, the time, lines, the gallery view, desktop view. Actually, oh, isn't this teaching streaming? There we go. This was a vertical layout. So gallery, this. Uh, I had things like HackMD inserted in here. So I could enable or disable HackMD form showing up. The different desktops. And then these are overlays. So here, for example, we see the zoom overlay which gets inserted into here. OK, there's old text. And well, I adjust it around however I want. Uh... So what is nice is you can share you know, this, uh, what you have created. Yeah. Yeah. So I can then export the scene and then send it to others to use. And this is, uh, we can import. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this import? Yeah. Menu? Yeah. And I've never done this before, but, well, in theory. I think that's possible. something worth to try because you have done, I mean, you have spent a lot of time to, yeah. to define very nice mm -hmm. things. Could be nice uh -huh. to reuse. 
Yes. Also, this external device I've gotten mm, on Radovan's recommendation. It's a MIDI controller, and I've hooked it up to OBS to do various things to it. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I can push buttons to switch scenes, and... Um, so you are very professional, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it feels like a really good thing I'm doing here. Like, you know, I'm really looking forward to doing these big broadcasts and all kinds of things. Just buttons to mute and unmute things. Um, okay, well, let me see. I'm not sure if this will actually work. Uh... Okay, it's not working somehow. Mm. So I made a control knob that would do things like adjust the size of the um, picture gallery here, or adjust this, we start at 58, so, so I can I'm turn. Sure we are to be able yeah, I'm not sure because now we don't hear it. <laughs> oh. But uh, maybe this is expected. Uh, can you hear me now? Test one, two. Okay, so I pushed some button on here and my audio got changed. Um, but I'm, so you don't hear me, oh, I know, I muted my Zoom. Yeah. Okay, now you should hear me. Okay, yeah. So one of these buttons muted Zoom and I pushed it accidentally while trying to figure out things. Yeah, like, so I wrote down, I have this guide that shows what the buttons do in different channels and so on. And, yeah, but I mean, since I haven't used it much, I don't know it off the top of my head, so, well, yeah. I can know what I use for Zoom calls, but I don't know what the OBS things do. So, um... Yeah, I guess we're coming close to the end of our time. Um, yeah. So, I did it using, uh, sorry, I'm trying to make sure I haven't messed up my audio. On Twitch, is the audio working? Okay, do you hear Radafan's audio, what he just said? Okay, then I'm just going to ignore it and, okay, so for that, let's see. So I used OBS in my I think it was maybe my de oops. Okay. That crashed. So I used it in possibly my demo recording profile where I had hmm, was it here? Mm. 
Yeah. So I think what I did is I had it in OBS. I made the scene like this. And then I had my local view, which is like this. And then I used the windowed projector to make a window with the OBS output. And then I shared that via Zoom. So the window projector would mix myself, like recording my own myself, and the screen share. I see that here, like this desktop audio is going to red when someone talks, but so here I, this is my computer's audio control. It's a command line program that does it. Um, and I can see the so each of these is a different card. So this is the webcam microphone. Cards, but I'm really not sure what is wrong here. I guess I can take the time to show you something else. I can show you things like filters. So these are audio filters. So there's, I can control the gain of something to basically, or you can add filters like, oh, you can't see that. You can add filters like noise suppression and so on which when added, I didn't add. Uh, okay, I have too many windows open and I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. So noise suppression and do things like, how do you, Actually, I hadn't seen this particular thing here before. So now there's an audio filter in Zoom, or for the desktop audio. But I don't know if it's doing anything. Maybe I completely broke the audio. There's also video filters. Um, See, there's a filters option here, so I can do things like add. Well, different things. Okay. Yeah. Um. Any other questions or comments or things to talk about? So I think this is probably serves as a general introduction, but there's probably still a lot of practical things to deal with, but we'll work on those together and write our manual together, basically.
So, well, good, yeah. So, I have a few people watching the recording or stream aren't able to hear what Anne and Rodolon are saying, and something's going wrong, but I haven't been able to figure out what it is I did. So, um, but basically, Anne just said that it wasn't too difficult to, I mean, it didn't seem as complicated as one might have thought. So, let's continue via our other channels. If you want to join us, we are here in Code Refinery, and here in um, Research Software Hour channels, and you know how to find us. And maybe we can like develop this a little bit and then make a better presentation sometime. Like that actually has an outline and we know what's important and talk about that and so on. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Bye. Thanks to everyone.